Hi everyone, we're live here at Epic Headquarters and happy anniversary to everybody. Yeah. All right. Happy anniversary. We're celebrating 15 years of Unreal Tournament this week and it, it, so far it's been really exciting. We have some really cool things planned. Hopefully they all come to fruition. Yeah. Um, but until then, we're going to have a really cool contest on the blog. And what we would like you, you to do is just post your favorite memory. I'll put the post up this afternoon and uh, just post your favorite UT memory. Uh, you can do it on Facebook too, but we would love if you go to the blog and just let us know so we have a, a good record of the, of the memories that you guys have. And we'll pick one of you to win something really awesome, which is this limited edition Unreal Tournament. Oh my gosh, I haven't seen one of those I in a long time. <laughs> no, and this one is actually signed by Tim Sweeney. So nice. this is this is something really cool. I might steal it for myself, but <laughs> and we'll also give you a set of all four of the Unreal Tournament t-shirts that just wound up in the Epic store, which is epic.gm slash UT store. So we're glad you like the shirts and we're glad you're <laughs> buying them. Um, a reminder that there are women's shirts on there too. So if, you, if you'd rather have women's sizes for someone, um, they're there as well. And uh, for some reason, they're not selling as well as the other one said. <laughs> 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 it's probably because... They're not pink? Well, th <laughs> they'll th we, they're not pink. But th the logo, as you can see, because I have a woman's shirt on today, the logo's smaller. Yeah. Ah. So I actually prefer the men's shirts, too. So I, I, think, th I think next time we'll order mostly, yeah. mostly the men's shirts with the larger logo. All right. So to get things started, we're going to take a look at the HUD. Ah, the HUD. The yeah, HUD so we've had a really good... Um, a lot of activity in the forums between us and the community, mm -hmm. and I think we've come up with what we feel is our first pass at what our new HUD is going to look at like. And um, I want to say that this has been a long, I it's been about a month of back and forth with four or five really talented people in the community working directly on art and then the whole community coming together and talking about what they're looking for and what type of widgets they'd like to see mm -hmm. and where they'd like to see it. And I mean, we spent days talking about, you know, should death messages being up top yeah. versus at the bottom? How should, you know, wh where where icons should appear yeah. and all those things. And I th I'm really happy with where yeah. we ended up. So why don't you bring yeah, up... Uh, yeah, I just want to say this has been a really productive interaction with the community. I think... Uh, I'm really happy with how that went. I think, you know, when you showed us kind of the, the last uh, five or so finalists, I mean, I thought any of them would be a worthy Yeah, um, um, without HUD a doubt. So we're really, I'm really happy with how that went. I thought the uh, community did a great, great job of collaborating yeah, and absolutely. really coming up with something that both in terms of aesthetics and in terms of functionality is better than any HUD we've done before by far. So, so here, here's what we're looking at right now. Now, keep in mind, this is still... Um, n this is a, a sample page that uh, Maria helped us mock up and helped clean up. What we did was we took all the elements we liked from the five or six HUDs that were posted by various artists who are out there, um, and we took elements from each one of them, and we said, okay, how can we turn this around? How can we make it look really common across all the, the widgets? And this is what we ended up with. Some, some really nice things. Uh, I, I really love the simplicity of all of these outlined widgets. They're nice, they're high contrast. One of the new features of the HUD system will be all these background slates that you see here. They all have their own individual opacity, so if you think that this is too contrasted, you can drop the opacity down and it'll be almost invisible. And you can keep the text at a different opacity level so it's easy to read the text. So it fits everybody's needs. Um, I'm really happy with where it came out. Obviously, I, I lost some of my battles. You know, you, everybody will notice the, the jump boots are down here, which were a big community yes. thing. Everybody wanted the jump boots right along where the rest of the power-ups were, and, well, there they are. So I, I, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. What do you think, Chris? Yeah, I am too. I think it's simple. It's easy to read. It goes yeah. with the cleanliness and the modern feel of the game, and um, I, I like it. And it's got all the information that you guys need and that, that Joe wanted and uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. you guys collaborated on so I think that's fantastic and one of the nice things about this is this is going to be our default HUD and I, I think we, we've got a good base of people out there looking at building their own HUDs and we're going to be working with them to bring them up to mm -hmm. speed and have their own HUD so you're going to have custom HUDs to work with as well so if you're not 100% happy with it that's okay our hope is that people will be you know creating places or things in the marketplace to help service those people who aren't 100% or who might want something different, who might want additional information. A lot of the, you know, we saw some that had 
FPS counters over here and you know ping counters and those are things that the average person wouldn't care about but those are great ideas to have in the right. marketplace and we're just trying to set the initial style here and I'm pretty happy with where we so are. So could today. people essentially create themes for the marketplace? You you could absolutely. I mean, you could build a HUD over uh, based on your favorite sports team if you really wanted to, although right. I mean, I don't know if that could end up in the marketplace, but you could build uh, clans could have their own specific right. cool hook looking right. HUDs that all the clan members use. Yeah, that's, that's one thing, cool. thing people were talking about a place for their clan logo to sit yeah. at the top of the HUD. So when they when they're broadcasting or Twitch streaming their games, that mm -hmm. they can they'll have their clan logo yeah. right up there yeah. on the top, which yeah, is a so really really cool idea. We should be able to have all that ability in the HUD um, and all available in the marketplace relatively early on. There's something really strange about this one though. I what? see. Dr. Sin, of head of Mysterial. You got you to read the comments <laughs> over there. It <laughs> yeah, says, was, it's man, very clear, a good thing Matt is AFK, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll oh, I see, that's awesome. This HUD is actually from man, Matt's point of view, news. if you actually look at the widgets and read the story that's that's up on the HUD. It is from Matt's point of view, and he's not there, because <laughs> he, is, he is never, you know, 8th out of 27. No. As a matter of fact, Chumbo and... Um, Hypno are probably two of the only people can actually be ahead of him in a game, so. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's definitely fun. And this shows off what our new weapon bar, um, we're really set on doing a vertical weapon bar. And this shows off how we're going to do groupings and how it becomes really clear of what, you know, what weapons are associated with what key that's going on. Uh, overall, I, I just think that the community really knocked out everything that we were looking for here. So the fact that you see, we see that four sticking out more, does that mean that people have scrolled to that area? Or? Right, the fact that it's pushed out like that is an indication that you currently have group four selected, and if you continue to hit four, first it would show you your shock, then it would show you your rocket launcher, then it would show you the your flag. sniper, and then it would show you your flak. And it would scroll just through that group individually. And of course, if you use the scroll wheel, it just scrolls up and down. Through all the weapons, would. that's pretty awesome. Yeah, I, I'm really happy. Um, implementation on this is happening right now, so hopefully, it's not going to make this week's build, but hopefully the new HUD will be in next week's build. Really? And, that's, um, that's awesome. Yeah, I, Maria is working on taking all these elements and giving us uh, CTF versions that we're going to iterate on and, and Team DM versions that we're going to iterate on, so that'll come up pretty quick after that. Cool. And then, as I said, I'm, I'm working with some of the community guys who did the actual prototypes and all the HUDs that everybody has seen in that thread and helping them. We're going to get them up and running so that we can get their, th their HUDs as they wanted it, as they designed it, mm -hmm. as they envisioned it, as a way of proofing out the whole HUD system. So it's going to be great. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, congratulations to everybody. You guys really did a great job. And the collaboration on that thread was just amazing. And yeah. And, and the results just show. It's, it's yeah. really Yeah, I mean, uh, we, we somebody would post something, and then, you know, four hours later, there'd be two pages of comments of back and forth on where things should go and how things should work. And it, and it was just great. And it opened up a lot of ideas. It's awesome. So once again, great job, guys. We're really excited to see these and where you guys went. If you guys want to uh, check out the forum thread, head over to the forums, just, just search for HUD, or just lo look for any of Joe's posts, because <laughs> that's where most of his posts are lately. Yeah. And uh, just check out the thread and see if some of the um, other work that people have done. So next, I'm totally excited to <laughs> talk about this with, with, uh, with Chris. <laughs> Chris, I don't know if you guys know it or not, but Chris not only is amazing at his, his art that he does digitally, um, doing the characters and everything that he's done through all the you know gear series and Unreal Tournament, but Chris is also a sculptor. And you have a little studio at home. I've got the Wicked Workshop. The at Wicked home, yeah. Workshop. <laughs> <laughs> and that's another yeah. thing you can look up. If you look up Wicked Workshop, yeah. there's a video, actual video out there where he shows the Wicked yeah, Workshop. Yeah, so I, I do that to kind of calm down from my <laughs> my crazy <laughs> day, right? I, I'll go home and just do some traditional work. That's how he relaxes. It's after cathartic, streams. right? I mean, yeah. it's, just, it's just really nice to actually get your hands dirty and, and, and work with something that's tangible rather than digital that, that mm -hmm. goes online. So I, I enjoy doing that. And so uh, anyway. Yeah, so Chris works in uh, Super Sculpey. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. I work in a lot of different mediums, but uh, Super Sculpey is one of them. Yeah. And he has some some stuff in his office. It's like absolutely amazing. So, one of the guys, uh, one of the artists, did some concept art, right? Yeah, I had Rich Luong do it. Um, we were working together. Um, we took some of the ideas from the Necris post that Guba had done, mm -hmm. um, and some of the others. And I felt like, hey, let's let's take this guy and iterate really quickly on some of this stuff because we got to get some characters online. Um, 
So there's some influence from that. Uh, we talked about, hey, what do we want to do with the Necris characters? The Necris characters were created by Fader Corp. Yep, um, right. Through a nano black technology that reanimates dead tissue, um, essentially microbots uh, is nano black nanotechnology. And um, how does that show through in the characters? Um, they're made for combat it, in the tournament. Um, so I felt like they should be more of a throwback to the original yeah. UT where they were more militaristic rather than UT3 where they were kind of more flourished and, and had I think some I crazier think it was armors. One of, one of the Unreal tournaments or maybe it was Unreal Championship that uh, somebody said uh, from Fader Corp that no one kills like the dead. Yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. That's <laughs> a, a great I think that's line, one of the yeah. reasons the necklace have always been so yeah, popular. Death is only the beginning, type. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I took that and we we kind of ran with it and and we started to spitball some concepts and uh, I don't know if uh, Shelly, do you have that the concept art up? There we go. It's up now. Okay, so this is this was kind of like a first iteration. We just said, hey, what would this guy look like? Uh, is there markings on his face? Are they corpse-like? How corpse-like are they? What are the proportions? Um, what do they have on their bodies? Uh, are, what are they wearing jackets? Are they wearing fatigues? Do they have combat boots? Are they militaristic? How militaristic? SWAT-like? Um, things like that. How does the nanotech play a role in their look? Um, so does that, is it fluid? Does it harden? Does it, uh, is it a external? Uh, as well as internal, reanimating them. Do they have micro machines that push this stuff through their body? You know, uh, so we kind of explored those those directions. Um, and of course, we want we want male and female. Um, and this was kind of the female version. So they do kind of look soldierish. At the they look a little bit. And this is kind of like the underneath. So this and again, this is first pass. We we took this and we said, well, it's a little too stark. Let's let's go from there. So. Uh, we started to spitball costuming on her um, and makeup designs and, and, and things like that. And the idea is that the hair and any markings on them would be the nano black showing through on the surface um, awesome. in areas. And one, one really cool idea w that somebody had was you could actually, we were wondering if the nanotech could grow on them in the game to almost create an armor of the skin, like make the skin armor, because it's a black liquid no, kind of thing see. external mm -hmm. and maybe normally their faces are exposed but when they go into stealth mode or, or you know combat mode it covers up and, and gets crazy so um, can we do the next mm -hmm. sure. again uh, spitballing the male facial concepts um, I kind of like the idea of the skullish look to the head the, the one top center only the black I thought was a little too much for the face, so we reversed it, and we made it so that the the exterior of the face and the jaw and the neck were black. And I really like it. It has sort of that tribal look to it. Too. Yeah, I like that too. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Oh, we're going to have all of these pictures. We're going to put them up on the blog. I'm going to do a blog post. Yeah, this and I'll afternoon. do. I'll also do a forum post so you guys can get on there and get crazy with. Uh, with uh, suggestions oh, no, these, and stuff. These are awesome. Um, I think some of the more tribal ones are a little too much. Um, yeah. I think Still these, cool yeah, some of these are kind of neat, but uh, again, some of them might be too much. We we kind of we kind of settled on a um, a simpler combo if you if you go something like this, where she's kind of got this nano black creeping up her neck and around her face, and maybe it's through the hair and behind the eyes. And um, that could grow, mm -hmm. expand, or, or retract on her flesh as she went through game modes or whatever. Or it could just stay like that, you know, some cool markings and stuff. So down at the bottom, y I can see like a little logo for, is that like from the, yeah, oh yeah, it's from if, Fader Corp. If you go back one, so um, this was a logo I found on one of our forums. Very um, cool. Cognizant CE was mm -hmm. the guy that did it, I, I believe. Um, it was kind of a raven thing. I, I thought it was kind of. I thought it was pretty neat. What I what I'd like to do is start to brand our factions. Um, you know that goes for like Iron Guard and uh, Thunder Crash and Corrupt and the major corporations, Fader and Leandri. Yeah, that's So awesome. that we have an in-game fiction and we have more of a branding that we could use for all kinds of things. Um, 
one of the things I'd love to re to do is kind of reintroduce these characters to the masses at some point because um, there's people out there, you know, my son's age and stuff that don't really know yeah. uh, <laughs> UT characters. So. To I have not brought. I, th right. I think, I think frankly, <laughs> even a lot of people who played UT, right? I mean, we we've never done a very good job right. of yeah. presenting our backstory and kind of building that world. We right. we, we allude to it a little bit, but if you're not paying attention, and now it's a really cool story. This too. is just yeah. what what you see here is just an example of what I'd love to do. What I what would be fantastic is if the community stepped up and took these and just went. Oh, crazy with them, you yeah. know, th Henrik and, and any all those guys. <coughs> um, there's a lot like of talented Iron guys Guard on there. Yeah, a lot of talented graphic designers on mm -hmm. there, and and we'll put up a faction list, and and you guys can go nuts with this stuff. But it would be great to brand our factions and have T-shirts with this stuff on, and and you know, all yeah, this yeah, would make a great T-shirt. I mean, yeah. uh, it yeah. reminds me of like a a good album cover. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the the wings. I thought I thought it was pretty apropos with the. He had a, it was a raven kind of that he did in alchemy, I think, with the with the wings and stuff, almost like a Rorschach uh, thing. And it was it to me, it signified resurrection, right? Yeah. Which to me is what the necklace is. Yes. Um, this is so really I, awesome. I thought that was pretty neat. Yeah. Uh, so again, spitballing the female. Um, I see what you're saying about how you uh, you inverted this with that other guy. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it definitely shows. It just makes a cooler skull pattern on there, yeah. and, and it's it's a nice feel. Um, to me, these are these are almost what Darth Vader should have looked like with the mask off, right? I mean, these yeah. are these are just oh cool yeah. characters. I, I I like them a lot. I, I think some of these are overdone with the with the facial effects again, but uh, there's definitely something there. We're still, you know, we're spitballing costuming and, and things like that. Um, you know, what kind of clothing and, and stuff. But I love this, this, guy. this guy really resonated with me. Um, everything black on him is kind of the nano black, and the idea is that it, it protects his organs from damage, and the white stuff is, is kind of a pale flesh and would be real subsurface y and, and, and things like that. Um, and they've got these little kind of micro machines in them that course that fluid through their bodies and, and yeah. you know, make them internal and external. I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. So, uh, so, so I got real excited about these concepts. <laughs> and, uh, and over Thanksgiving break, what I did was um, I actually... Over Thanksgiving break, which, yeah, over which th amazes yeah, me. Yeah, well, I actually did a little scope on one of these guys. Ah. So I don't know if you guys can see this. Shelly, you want camera two? Oh gosh! So yeah. this is a uh, this is done in Super Sculpey, and it's kind of uh, baked and you know it turns into a plastic. It's a polymer clay, and you can you can sculpt really quick and uh, soft things with it, and then kind of bake it out. And so what I did was I sculpted it, and then I, I painted it. I used some little model parts from a tank and the decals for uh, some of the markings on him and, and stuff like that, and uh, it kind of gives you an idea. I like to do this with our stuff because yeah. it gives me an idea. <laughs> hey, is this viable? Will this really work? Like, how does the mm -hmm. paint scheme work? What What are the material types? Like, we I have all these PBR the materials and stuff over here in the veins that you can see. Going yeah, so I, I, see I think I think as a, as it would be really cool to have the contrast of this dead, pale, uh, subsurface-looking skin with this yeah. really uh, shiny nano black um, external kind of armor coating or whatever it is, you know on these guys so um, well, it's absolutely incredible and it, it to me it's just like oh, oh look it's loke <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean that's that's the idea right is is that it's that so um so that's it we have i think there's a couple more screenshots of 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 this guy that you can in here yeah in that folder if you can pop those up and so these were these photos were taken by wha another bill green. one of our artists yeah. bill green so and bill just kind of shot it we're going to uh, we'll put these up on the uh, on the blog as well, so you guys can have you know the higher res versions of of these. Yeah, oh, and you can kind of study them and see kind of where we'd like to go with this guy and, and stuff. Which is going to be a huge help because, you know, the necklaces are just so iconic and yeah. and everybody's like, well, what are the necklaces yeah. going to look like? And and it's really cool that that you know. They're 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 like a soldier type, right. like the like and the first Unreal tournament. And I of. think there's room for lots of variation on this, right? Mm -hmm. This is one guy. This is how I pictured Loke. Yeah. Um, and I picture there to be other necklaces that, that are more elaborate than this and some that may be dialed back a little bit, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so there is room for 
I really love this look through here with this black Different lips. design. Yeah, yeah you know what? It's, dead, it's, uh, it's real tribal kind yeah. of too, um, but yet it's techy at the same time and, and kind of neat. If, if you look at some of the older, the, some African tribes that have the, uh, the banding on the necks mm -hmm. and then the, the red, pa they, sometimes they paint their, their mm -hmm. faces half red and stuff yeah. and stuff like that. So yeah, it's a kind of a show. modern take on a, on a tribal look, you know, which, which I think is really neat. Okay. Cool. Well, that's amazing. All right, Pass so moving on, Chris. Thank you so oh, much. No that yeah, everybody's yeah, yeah. really getting I'm really excited, excited yeah, about I'm it, excited, and yeah. I think that's cool. Can't wait to see it in 3D, and uh, I can't wait to see it. And, yeah. and look, yeah, look, I can't look wait for, for the blog. I, I know who my and character will be. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So look for the blog post this this afternoon. I will get back get to it as soon as I get back to my desk, and I'll get all those pictures up for everyone. I also want to talk to Chris a little bit about the process. I think you might have some images too of. Oh, yeah, I've progress. got some work in progress images and All stuff, right. too, yeah. So yeah. I will have that up this afternoon, and I'll post about it on the forums and on Facebook and Twitter when it's when it's done. And next, we're going to talk to Steve, who's been working on some of the weapons. So a lot of weapons have been getting various minor tweaks, and uh, most of what I want to show you today is still kind of experimental stuff that we're playing around with. Um, first one I wanted to show is the uh, bio-rifle. Uh, first, the first pass at it was kind of cool, but not really very functional, so... We've come up with a new, so now if you fire a fully charged blob that, if it's charged enough, it'll, um, it'll pulse, and then you can overcharge it with your link beam, and it pops oh, to create a, awesome. a web. So <laughs> that's a little that bit, yet. and you can also, like, you can, you can overcharge it and leave it not completely charged, so you can set a trap and then do the final bit of charging to, to, to spring it. Yeah, somebody's running through yeah, it. Yeah, somebody's running through it. Um, let's see what else I want to show. The, um, How do you combat that? On, on the uh, other side. You can you can combo you can it. You can shoot any okay. way. I mean, you can shoot those. Okay. The um, lobs. So what I really like. Uh, about or you this you can shoot a combo. It's just it's really yeah. something that's meant to either be a trap where you you find a, a mm -hmm. situation where they can't see it, where the the guy that's coming around the corner can't see it, or it just slows them down. So I can imagine like in CTF, and it's yeah it's a it's a kind of a two weapon combo, but. I could certainly see that being something cool, like in uh, like supporting a flag carrier with the flag carriers sure. laying down these blobs as they're running away, and then one of their support guys is overcharging them, causing webs and kind of slowing down the. Very the other cool. thing I've been playing around with is the um, minigun shard, and so now we've got it sticking in walls again. Um, last week's build had um, the shards actually had blocking collision, so you could jump on them, and but they would also block other players, and especially with uh, high ping, it was, it was it was difficult to handle the issues with. Uh, how that felt. So now I'm trying something new this week, which is just um, basically make them explode on contact, but toss you up. So you can kind of use them. Whoops, I didn't get all the way up. You have to, I'm not very good at this, and I'm functioning on lack of sleep, but. Um, <laughs> new <Hi>. baby. <laughs> Oops, and I killed myself. Oh, I need to, I need God mode. Um, <laughs> anyway, so the idea is it's, it's, another, it's another way of, uh, um, of getting around the level. And also, it's basically kind of a short, it's a, a short-lived um, trap that you can set for people and that they, if enemies run into it, they will also blow it up. Then the last one I wanted to point out was the, um, let's go this way, sorry. I'm not, just not familiar with this level yet. <laughs> <laughs> really? <Yeah. laughs> um, is the Redeemer. So the thing that we've done here. Has gotten rid of the giant piece on the bottom. Well, first of all, yeah, the, 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 the <laughs> Pete did a nice job of kind of cleaning it up a little bit so that we could move it forward. So the um, the big thing now is, so we already had changed it so that when you die, even if you don't have the Redeemer out, you drop it. Okay, it's behind you. Oh. But um, the other thing we want to do is make it visible always. So it's a new feature of weapons that you can have them, and of course it's not working. When I, oh, because I've got, so it's out right now. If I switch to my Enforcer, then the redeemer oh, appears. Oh, it goes on your back. That's on awesome. my back. So that way you can always tell if somebody's got a redeemer and you know they're going to drop it. So if, for example, somebody's uh, trying to go into the enemy base and, and spike a redeemer in their in their flag ba in the flag room, um, the other guys know that that's happening. It, it makes it a higher risk maneuver. It gives you a, a good way to um, to try to prevent it or fight it, and then you get the advantage of if you kill a guy carrying the redeemer, you get it. Yeah, I love that it makes it, he just becomes a big target. Everybody yep. would be targeting him looking for his redeemer. That's great. Yeah. So um, so those are a few things. There's a lot of other um, minor tweaks we've been doing, and uh, that's really, uh, I'm going to keep working on fixing networking bugs and focusing on starting to get the uh, weapons a little bit more balanced and polish up the new functionality. All right. 
So uh, be sure to join uh, the Unreal Engine stream tomorrow. I, um, unfortunately, I don't know the topic uh, because at last minute I got a message from Chance saying, that's not the topic. So um, <laughs> just just check the uh, Unreal Engine forums. There's a, a big sticky post on what, what the uh, yeah. topics are going to be tomorrow. So make It'll sure be you real stop interesting. by there. Um, with Unreal Engine also, uh, 4.6 is out today. Yes, um, that's right, it came out I this morning. I think we should, I think our next build, I think we're upgrading now. Did Pete already check that in? So uh, I think he was so looking at it and yeah. he's trying to download it right now, so, or so get it or something like that. Yep. I'm looking at Zach because he usually knows these answers. Well, yeah, I think we were on preview last build that we didn't release last week, but now it looks like it. Yep. Okay, yeah. so we'll, that'll be tomorrow. Cool. We'll be ready to go. All right, everyone, thank you. We'll see you next week. Thanks a lot. And Good make you. sure you Bye join you us on the forums and let us know what you think. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.